We may need one for that soda. I want your those twist off. Hey. Hey, y'all. <laughs> it's Friday. Live o'clock. <laughs> We're late. We're a whole day late. We didn't go live yesterday because there was some weather we were dealing with in Charleston. What's up, DC Elixir Mixer? Oh, I see the little emoji. Mwah. Back to ya. But we are here Friday, and we are going to be doing some tastings, giving you guys some updates, sharing some stuff. Oh, yes, I my microphone. Hey, Miss Chef O Lovely. You are missed, girl. Yes, please drop some hearts, share some love. You know, we love these um, live interactions with you guys. Mm -hmm. Give us a chance to connect. So let us know where you're located at in the world today. If you don't know who we are, I'm Johnny Caldwell. And I'm Tanika Reeves. And, and we, we are the Cocktail, Cocktail Bandits, Bandits, your curly ladies who talk cocktails daily. And we are located in beautiful and historic Charleston, South Carolina. Downtown. Where we curate cocktails and host events around food and beverage culture here in the Low Country and beyond. Mm-hmm. Yes. And on these days, we do our tastings. We get so much product in the mail. We are excited to come and show you guys what we have going on, taste with you guys, answer some questions, and, you know, just do our thing. That's right, since we haven't been doing any in-person events, unfortunately, um, due to the pandemic, but we are looking at hosting something in November. Stay tuned for that. We're gonna bring back a classic Cocktail Bandit event, hopefully, if things don't. Yeah, these numbers, these, these numbers. numbers have been a little bit perplexing, so been. people stay at home until November, okay? <laughs> That's stay right. at home until we do our event, and then, you know, Wear your mask, do whatever you need to do to protect yourself, and we're going to have a good time. That's right. Wash your hands, sanitize, social distance. We will get through all this together. But in the meantime, we're glad you're here with us live today. Exactly. Grab yourself something to drink, some water, some milk, some spirits. Water? Hey, just as long as you're staying hydrated. Mm -hmm. That's important. Some lemon water is always good. That's what I have, lemon water on the low. Hydrating is good for your skin. Cleansing. Absolutely. I'm just sipping on some tequila to get my palate right. <laughs> but to each his very own. Next week. Next week. So That's my we, first date. We recently uh, got some honey delivered to us. Mm -hmm. The good folks at Apis Mercantile. Mm -hmm. They are located in Charleston. It is... Um, a duo. It's probably more than just Isabel and um, her cohort, but his name is John. There we go. <laughs> and um, they have been working with local restaurants and bars to curate um, sugars for their cocktail programs, and they just have their own line as well. So, as a, you know, they, of course they have you know the southern traditional honey, but they also have a chili pepper infused honey. Yeah, but I really like. It. See that? And this is only a six ounce jar, but it's heavy. This is real thick, authentic, raw bee honey that has been infused with chilies. I could see this and definitely maybe like, um, let's see here. I don't do a lot of Bloody Marys, but if I'm gonna do it mm -hmm. and it's gonna be spicy, give me some sweet heat to go with that like tomato juice type of thing. I need, some people would put Tabasco in it to add like some spice to their Bloody mm -hmm. Marys. I think this will give a nice round sweetness and still give you that heat that will complement the tomato juice. Yeah, try that out, Jackie. I'm gonna try Let it. Let me know, I'm because I am not a Bloody Mary fan <laughs> at all, and I couldn't imagine sweet with that tomato juice. I mean, I mean, I know we put a little sugar in our spaghetti and yeah. things like that, but Woo. Just try it out, girl. Let I'm me know it. what's going on with this. Um, they have some other cool flavors, too, like the blueberry raw honey. You can, If you can see it, it's very dark. Super dark. We have someone here that says beautiful black backdrop. Thank you. We also have orange blossom, southern wildflower, and then we have some pollen. Yeah, they have a jar of 
just some natural bee pollen. It's like little balls, little pellets of bee pollen. And people put them in their smoothies. People put them in their like uh, fruit bowls or like acai bowls or whatever, just to add some more like volume and texture. Texture, and also I guess it has like dietary supplemental needs. Like it gives you some like enzymes and different stuff like that. For the people who like do bodybuilding and stuff, they do a lot of bee pollen. I want to open it and check it out. Sure. I think that this right here would be really cute too with like um, a bee's knees cocktail, like just having it on the sides. You guys can see the little droplets. They're so cute. Yeah, it says that it is slightly grainy or crunchy texture. It's excellent for smoothies, yogurts, and granolas. It smells like granola -y. It does. Like grainy. Someone says orange blossom sounds good. Yum. Citrus. Yes, I'm gonna try that one. We're gonna try that one probably first. And then we have Black Culinary, hey boo. She okay. says, okay, I totally look forward to these lives, definitely for the tips and recommendations, but also the looks. Oh, thanks, thanks girl, appreciate that. Yes. And DC Elixir Mixer says, granola E. Yes, <laughs> granola E, that's fine. You know what we're trying to say? Oh, nuts oh, someone um, gave me a compliment on the cow Rochelle earrings. Federal Flashes. Federal Flashes. She's also in Food and Bev and in the hospitality world. I love to, like, rock our people's stuff because we her name is the James of all trades. And we really are in this industry. We do a lot of different creative things. So we like to show off and show our love for our people. So check her out, Federal Flashes, on Instagram. And check out Apis Mercantile as well. See about their honey collection that they have. They actually have a honey that they've aged in a barrel. So we are excited. We're going to do a tasting with them in their location in a couple of weeks. So you can hear more about what they have going on. More about how they're giving back to the community and being sustainable with the bees. That's really important for our uh, honey production to protect the bees. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them explain it and how what they're doing in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. But go ahead and follow Apex Mercantile today. Yes, and they're also doing mead. So you guys yes. know that we are into the beverage part of all of this. So if you guys don't know, mead is a spirit made, an alcoholic drink made with honey. That's right. So people usually want to associate it with wine, but you know, Wine snobs are saying that technically it's not a grape it's or a not. fruit, it's actually a honey. But mead is the oldest, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, alcoholic beverage that we um, have. So we're excited to try some of their meads. That is so true. We can talk more about that, but we're gonna let the experts tell you yeah. more about the honey once we you know, do all that tasting in a couple of weeks. But yeah, just think about it when you go to the store and you're, don't just grab that regular bear honey that you're used to getting in that bear jar. Try something different. Try something local, if at all possible. It tastes different too. You can tell when it's local honey. And it, it's just so, it makes me proud when we see Charleston's address on the products. I didn't know today, I didn't know that certain waters were made in South Carolina or, or got from South Carolina until I started reading the labels. So read your labels too and, and support local as much as possible. Are we gonna taste some of this? Sure, or? if you wanna try something. I'll Ooh. try. Okay, yes. I'll try this orange blossom and I wanna try the blueberry. There should be a straw up there, not a spoon right in there. You see in that plastic bag? It's a wooden one right up there, Jules. It's up there. And there it is. Mm -hmm. If it was Perfect. a snake, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> we got it going on. We got our office a little bit organized, but we're, we're trying, y'all. Yes, found her. Thank you. And you are killing it. Yes, Federal Flashes. And get these earrings and tell her Cocktail Bandit sent you. Thank you. It takes so we have a dream. Orange Blossom and the Blueberry. A team brings it all together. So you're trying the orange blossom first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually done a tasting of honey with the American Honey Board a couple years ago. Over 20. It was very informative. It'll blow your mind, the, the varying taste that you can get from different honeys. Because the bees are actually pollinating these fruits up in this area. They have different bees in certain areas and that they stay in those areas mm -hmm. too. It's really amazing that they do that. And then they bring back the honey, I mean, bring back whatever the, the what is it? They're what pollinating. Are, the, pollinate, the pollination, mm -hmm. and then it takes on the flavor. That's right. So this orange blossom really tastes citrusy and orange and light, and it's even a lighter color. That's right. 
um, in the actual jar. And the blueberry, I'm gonna do the, the bottom part of this so I don't waste. It's fairly darker. It is. Let me see. Yes, absolutely. Please, please taste that. It's so fruity. You can definitely get all of the blueberry. It's like jammy, but honey as well. I love this. This would be a great syrup for a cocktail because you get honey, but you get that nuance of um, fruit. That really is good. It, it's deeper than just like a typical honey. Like mm -hmm. it's more depth of flavor going on. I'm gonna try the orange blossom just Go so ahead. I can have it. Go it's so good. Says, Thank you for the info. This is my first time catching your live. I'm Clarissa. Hey, Clarissa. Thank you, girl. And I like the, the quick responses as well. You found James really fast. It's really good. You will be surprised how it transforms your cocktails or if you're going to add it to like a scone or something like that too. Mm -hmm. Why not elevate your biscuits in the morning with some, you know, artisanal honey. This would be really good on toast too. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the full jammy flavor, but you want a little hint of that fruit, this would be perfect for some toast in the morning. We were someplace earlier this week and they got, they served us avocado toast that had like honey on it. Now, if they had chosen a honey that was richer, I think it would have complimented it better. Or more like wildflower. Or more vegetal. wildflower, yeah. more vegetal. Like um, there's honeys that are pollinating avocado plants. And those are earthy and rich and dark honeys. I think that's what you need if you're gonna have it on a savory type of dish. DC Elixir Mixer says he missed he missed tasting with us. Oh, we did this year too. We have to we have to make something happen. We gotta. I know DC is having their um, DMV Black Restaurant Week, which I got going on for that. Once a year, we uh, get together with other beverage professionals and we judge different spirits um, for the Am American Craft Spirits Association with Mr. DC Elixir yeah. Mixer. And this year, we had to do it remotely at Play. home. So it was, <laughs> it was, you know, we were missing out on having that camaraderie and being able to like taste with people and get their ideas and feels. So hopefully, 2023, because I don't know. Yeah, 2022 is looking a little. Like, like we're going to be sitting put. We thought, we thought we were at the end of this, but now it's a whole new beginning. So We're staying positive. We're making the most of it. And we're sipping our way through. We have carbon-based cuisine. Say thank you, ladies. Thank you. Without you guys, there's no us. We appreciate it. Now we got some more things. We actually got this from our good friends who uh, run Slow Foods USA. They were gonna do an event in Charleston with Vicario Spirits, and we were gonna curate cocktails for that program. But then COVID happened. But we still wanted to show Vicario some love since they sent us over this beautiful package of their spirit offerings. And they're mostly liqueurs, right? Yeah, they are liqueurs. And they are based half the time here in South Carolina. Whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. And then the other half of the time, they're based in Italy. So they bring um, the fruits and the things that they're using to make these uh, spirits and these liqueurs to the States so that we can enjoy a piece of Italy from them. So it's been really awesome, especially since we've gone to Italy and come right. back. We know how important these liqueurs are and to have them central here in our state is a, an honor. Actually. It really is. And they are crazy responsive to their company. I think that does the importing is Salute LLC. I think they are the ones, the company actually bring in the Vicario Spirit. So look them up on social media. Um, and actually, you know what? It's in Greer, South Carolina. Okay. Greer. And if you guys know anything about <laughs> South Carolina, that is the upstate. Greer is like kind of up there. Is it, is it kind of like middle upstate-ish Columbia, between Columbia, Spartanburg? area yeah okay not too far from us maybe two hours yes so they are bringing a little bit of italy to upstate south carolina yeah a little bit of culture i love to see it in those areas like that you need a little something like this to like change things up a little bit shake them up and they have some really cool flavors too it's like quintessence liqueur i don't know what quintessence <laughs> liqueur is but this one a bronze medal at the San Francisco um, Spirits Competition. Oh my gosh. They're so, this one is an artichoke liqueur. I'm assuming it'll taste something like Sennar, maybe not. Maybe, you know, less 
Artichoke is one of those hard flavors. <laughs> <laughs> you got to really be, you know, wanting that vegetal, earthy mm. flavor if you're making something with an artichoke liqueur. But DC Alexa talking about chow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we also have like a licorice yeah. liqueur. I'm sure that's very interesting. And it kind of reminds me of um, those spirits that they have overseas. Uh, sambuca, and like sambuca. sambucas mm -hmm. and things like that. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tasted this one. This one is still fresh. And we've had this since 2019, maybe 2018. Uh, a long time. We've had it for a while. We've used some of them. But, um, Most of them are not open. This one is olive leaf liqueur. Now, I don't think I've ever had an olive leaf liqueur before. Yeah. I don't even have it. I'm going to try that. I don't know what it could possibly taste like. That could be probably interesting in a uh, martini. Yeah. Like you a give it a different uh, flavor or nuance because of the olives. You have your own style of dirty. <laughs> I like it. What else do we have? I mean, they're so um, unique, the flavor. Herba Lucia, like I don't know if that's like a family name or if that's really a herb named Lucia. I don't know. Uh, Dragon Cello. Have y'all heard of Dragon Cello? What's a Dragon Cello? Dragon Cello liqueur, right? Yeah. Well, okay. So this one I have heard of. Um, walnut liqueur and Nocino is, I think it's um. Yeah, Nocino and Nocello. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. This one is familiar, but I'm sure it doesn't taste like what I'm used to. I'm going to try the olive leaf. This one looks the most interesting. Are you going to try some of this, too? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> just a little schlample. Yeah, I'll just try a little teeny bit. A little schlample, just so people can get, you know, the taste, the ideas flowing. You know, we're always creating cocktails over here, and you never know what can inspire that. It looks, it's a little dark, dark. yellow in color. It smells like, it smells vegetal. Yeah. You know how like olive oil has a smell but doesn't have a smell? Yeah. It smells a little bit like olive oil. And it's super viscous. It which is thick. Mean, uh, viscous means it's super thick. Most liqueurs are thick and it sticks to the, to the sides of glasses and the things that stick, they call them legs. Mm -hmm. So this one has some nice legs on it. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Okay. Oh, it's like spicy. It's sweeter than I thought it was going to be. But it's very uh, silky. It's slick on your tongue. Okay. I'm not mad at that. It's very slick on your tongue. It's subtle, too. This is good. This would be great in a martini. I can totally see that. 38% alcohol. That's uh, almost regular. That's pretty yeah. high spirit-wise for liqueur. I, enjoy, I like this. 10 out of 10. I like it. Okay, Vicario. See, we saved this for y'all. <laughs> this was a nice surprise. I can't go too crazy because I'm taking it easy right now, but I would I would finish this off. Gotcha. Thank you. And which one are you going to try? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't want to do an artichoke. I don't want to do stuff that we've already had. Right. I'm gonna do this licorice. Let's try do licorice. licorice. I do like a Twizzle every once in a while. I'm not even gonna cap, but I don't do the black licorice. I'm more of a red licorice girl. This is like black licorice. It's it does. Super dark. It looks like coffee. It does. It's it's even a little like um, cloudy. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a cloudy. It is cloudy. It is very cloudy. No other information. It is 28% alcohol. Okay. Yeah. It's a little funky on the nose. Salute. I don't know. All but right. it smells like Cheers. a little meaty cheese. It does smell. <laughs> it smells umami. Yes. Umami is like, um, oh my God. Savory. Savory, like bacony or um, cooked meats. I always say like curry chickpea, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's super. That is evolving taste. Like when you first sip it, it tastes like one thing. This is a long finish. That's too. what it is. It's a long, long finish. Fin it's still going. It's, it's still going. It's not overly sweet, like sugary sweet. <laughs> Our team it's is still laughing. going. <laughs> wow. And it's not a bad thing. Like I don't want you to think that it tastes bad. It just is very interesting. It's like a little, 
long. raisiny, <laughs> like currants. I'm getting like currant flavors. Like yeah, it's deep, it, yeah. Deep plums. Stone fruit. Stone fruit, like definitely um, interesting. Jammy. It's deep, like marmalade jam. Yeah. It's not really, I mean, you get licorice in the very beginning, but it evolves. What we think of when we think of licorice in like a niece forward type of way, this is not it. This is not very crazy herbal. And it's not bitter. And it's not bitter. It's definitely sweet. That's good. It's not giving you any heat on the lips or any heat on your um, on your throat when you, you know, ingest it. They actually um, won a silver medal in 2016, and I can tell why this is made very well. It this is. This is a really well-made product. Shout out Vicario. to the Vicario. We did not sleep on y'all. We just didn't have the chance to really like. It's called time and it patience. Is... This was the perfect time for us to bring this out. Delicious. It was worth the wait. I'm going to say that. Can we rinse this out? I want to do the quintessence just to know what quintessence tastes um, yeah, taste like. And then we'll, we'll can, we can move on. No problem. Let's, I mean, literally, we still have to get off on of all of these. <laughs> so you're going to be seeing us use this uh, monk secret liqueur and so this. Geechee. <laughs> so geechee. So geechee just now. And all of this um, sorcerer's liqueur. You're going to see us use all of that here directly. Monk. Monks, you know monks corner. Monks, that's only monks. I know. Monks corner is a place. That's where oh. Charlemagne the God's from, you yes. guys. Dirt roads in South Carolina is what mm. we're talking about right now. We're talking about mm. Greer. We might as well talk about monks corner too. Monk. Okay, this one smells great, bright. Very herb herbaceous. Floral even. Mm, all right, Quintess Owens. Cheers. Cheers. Great color. She was like golden. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not drinking water. What are y'all drinking? It smells like it tastes. Woo! Okay. Woo! What's ABV on that? This is 30%, but this is what we're used to in Italian spirits. Bitter. Very bitter, long finish, and it's still like bitter. It's <laughs> still bitter. Very sharp, yeah. bitter notes. Bitter. That's bitter. Yeah, it has a place. It has a place in a cocktail. It's not bad bitter. It's um, Aperol bitter. Aperol bitter, not. If you guys have ever had Aperol, it's not Campari bitter. It's not Campari it's bitter. It's Aperol bitter. It's be definitely bittersweet, not just bitter bitter, which is like Campari. And there's a place for that too, because we want to have some here directly. Yes, we are. Y'all go 10 follow. out of 10. Check them out. 10 out of 10. Cosign on that. Mm -hmm. The three that we had, and we've used a couple others. Did you see missing? We've used them. A cherry liqueur. That was great. Um, there were some other ones I can't. We they can't were funky. Think. Yeah. They were like some runoff, like rose or something like that. All good stuff. Follow and this them. packaging. Let's talk about this packaging though. How cute. You keep it organized. I love that. Like a little traveling salesman mm -hmm. with their like uh, soaps or chocolates or whatever on display. Have my liqueurs, baby. And uh, again, Vicario. They are in uh, Greer, South Carolina, also in uh, Italy sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. And um, their website is salutellc.com. I don't know if it's salute, salute. I don't know if they put the, the, the Italian on it. Of course. But follow them. Try them out. And it says it's protecting the earth for future generations. Love so it. we love sustainability and all that good stuff, too. Check them out. As we mentioned a couple uh, videos ago, it's almost Negroni week. Goodness, it doesn't feel like it because... We didn't really have a Negroni week last year. Yeah. Um, they did some stuff digitally um, online, but there was no, like, promotion like they do every other year with Negroni week. Let's get this dumped out. And we did a couple of things with um, Capari as well, mm -hmm. like some Boulevardiers and some... Rositas. Rositas. So they sent us this package... And we just love a, a, a good kit. And this one was really well curated from the folks. Shaker and Spoon collaborated with Campari on this. And they sent us over an abundance of things. What do we have here? We have some sparkling water. Saratoga. And shout out to Shaker and Spoon, too. Y'all been killing it through the pandemic, um, working with different bartenders and getting the cocktails out, partnering with them. I think that's a dope concept. So shout out to them as well. And if you guys don't know anything about them, you know, look them up, Shaker and Spoon. 
Yes, they have been. That's a great thing to point out. Some of our friends have been able to collaborate with them mm -hmm. and curate their own original cocktails that you can buy in these kits. And that's just a way to support your bartender who may be out of work or just trying to bring an extra income with something creative that you can enjoy at home without being in their city. So maybe one of your favorite bartenders has a kit at Shaker and Spoon. So I know we have one. Um, our girl Janae yes. down in New Orleans has a kit with um, Shaker and Spoon. If you guys can... Please order and support our boo. She is working really hard down there creating dope content. Check her out online as well to Janae Angel. And our friend Beautiful Booze has one as well. Yes. Natalie is killing it. She's like, ugh. So She's in New York right now doing her thing. She, we just love to see it. Love to see it. We didn't get to see her this year when we were in Brooklyn because we were just crazy busy of our convent. But the love is real. Check out her cocktail that she has with Shaker and Spook. And check her out too. Beautiful Booze. On Instagram. Just mm -hmm. it's, it's really a beautiful account. Yes. So also in the kit was this magazine from Mbai, which is featuring uh, the Negroni on it. Leo. Negroni. And then they sent us a bunch of ingredients to make um, different, like, Negroni-inspired cocktails, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make one, since everyone knows the traditional way of making a Negroni. Does everyone know the traditional way of making a Negroni? We don't want to assume. Let's not. Tell the kids. So a uh, Negroni is made um, with three equal parts. It's usually the original recipe, which is about, I think it's 100 years old. I think last year was the 100th year, mm -hmm. or maybe 2019, but 2020 has messed us up, so forgive me. But it's made with three parts. It is Campari, which is the star of the beverage. It makes the color red. Mm -hmm. Then you have your gin, and then you have your vermouth. No. Yeah, some type of like... Vermouth. Vermouth. Yes. Yes. Y'all, we be switching it up. Sometimes we do it with the gin and the bourbon. Sometimes we make it on our own, like a rosita with the tequila. Right, right. It just depends. But the original cocktail is gin, vermouth, and Campari. Three equal right? parts. DC Elixir Mixer, he worked for Campari. You it's tell still us on. <laughs> what's going on. But they, um, and then you can also add bitters in it too. I think that's the other yeah. thing they're saying. But um, we love the notes. They send us over so many things. We're trying to find the main thing. <laughs> so, yes, it's a happy Negroni week. Celebrate with friends, Campari, and only the best gin. Okay. Best. I mean, we have some good gins. They were, there was actually a gin in this Bacaria uh, box as well, which is cool. Okay. So, they sent us um, different ingredients, different recipes for different renditions. So, one has hibiscus. One um, has, like, a coconut fat wash, which I think is so cute because we always see it as a bacon fat wash mm -hmm. so if you're not inclined to in you know indulge in meats then here's an option mm -hmm. unfortunately our assistant julia doesn't do coconut oil so she you know i don't know what to say about that jules <laughs> we're gonna have to find you uh something too for this maybe too. something like a grapeseed oil or avocado oil okay avocado oil could work yeah avocado oil or grapeseed oil Probably would be better. But you can already see when they sent it over, it wasn't like liquid, but it started to like congeal a little bit because it's real deal coconut. That's what you want to have in your hair when you're trying to like do a conditioner. This kind of stuff. Yeah, brown girl problems. <laughs> what I like about the coconut too is um, this is a way to do it without having any like meat grease involved. Like it's really a vegan option and we're around a lot of vegetarians and vegans and they can enjoy the drinks with us. So it's always good to think about Everybody, because we're at events sometimes and we don't eat pork. Well, we try not to eat pork. I'm going to keep it a bug. We try our best not to eat pork. And, you know, it really sucks when it's a bacon fat washed drink. You're like, oh, God, I'm going to taste it. But it's like, I really didn't want to drink that. So, And then we have, oh, that's Julia. So then we have <laughs> strawberry syrup as well as some grapefruit cordial. They even got down to these little spray bottles of botanical mist and little petite bottles of bitters, which are just so beyond cute. cute. If you can see how small it is in my hand. Tiny. Just did it like that, blow it up. It's <laughs> like, how little is this? It is. It's tiny. Poquito. <laughs> small, small, small. And um, balsamic vinegar, which don't sleep on that in a cocktail. It has a nice like shrub type of feel. Shrubs are usually um, vinegar based additives that you put inside cocktails. And pandan syrup. 
I've seen it before, but I'm not familiar with the, ta the taste profile. So we're going to make something here. Mm-hmm. And we also, of course, had Campari on deck already because... We keep Campari and Aperol. We have so much. And we are using a local, well, I guess a regional, we should say, gin. Bristol. Southern. Southern. They make this in Jackson, Mississippi. At Cathead. That's right. And this is a good, clean gin that's not overly botanical. Um, and I think it's going to complement this Campari well. Because we said, you know, it's going to be bitter. This Campari is definitely a bitter liqueur. Or bitter liquor. It's going to give you that orange peel, orange zest kind of flavor going on. Which one are we doing? Let's... This one? Yeah, let's do the, the Capri. Ca the Capri Crush. <laughs> I like that. We always crushing on something. This will be our cocktail crush today. Yeah. The Capri Crush. Okay. So, I mean, I guess, do we want to read the story? Yeah, read the story. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. <laughs> An island where Hollywood luminaries like Audrey Hepburn and Rita Hayworth frequently grace the cobblestone paths and where sea stone fishermen might wheel their wares past the hot new collections at the high-end fashion boutiques, Capri is a sparkling setting in which to enjoy a, Italy's mini chic and trendy aperitivos. Yes. Greg Meyer's concoction for such a stately scene what is it? Hybridizes two members <laughs> of the Campari cocktail family, taking the Negroni's stiff gin component and spritzing it up with the soda of its predecessor, the Americano. Oh. And for a true taste of La Dolce Vida, there's a sunset's worth of warm beaming, sunset's worth of warmth beaming from the cordial of orange, grapefruit, and cinnamon. Avanti. Okay. <laughs> You know what? I just saw some photos on Instagram of Jay-Z and Beyonce and Capri this week. So maybe Capri is still popping. Still a place that the celebrities go and hobnob and chill out at. So, you know, there's no lies being told here Okay. Well, on this note. That was the past. I mean, the, this was the past and the Beyonce and Jay-Z are the future. That's right. It's going down. Okay. So, Let's see. We like to start with non-alcoholic beverage. I mean, non-alcoholic ingredients first, just in case. But this only has one non-alcoholic non ingredient. We're going to go ahead and start with that. It'll be um, one ounce of this spiced grapefruit cordial. Oh, my gosh. It's tight. Yes. Okay, probably going to need and it's, yeah, someone from the team because my hand is all lotioned up for you guys. <laughs> I want mine to be oiled up as well. <laughs> there we Thank go. You. Teamwork makes the dream work. So there is one ounce of this. We're going to do two because we're making two of these Capri Crushes. Beautiful. And it does look thick, you know, with syrupy. Ooh. It also helps with the bitter, too, the sweetness. Yeah. It'll help with the bitter. It is a great color. Lovely. All right. And I'm sure you could probably make this fairly easy at home. Cordials, get some grapefruit, juice. It's only like four main ingredients. Yeah. Okay, and then we will do the gin. As we said, Bristol gin, good quality stuff. You said you're learning a lot, girl. I am so glad that you're learning. <laughs> We're gonna do one ounce of gin. It smells good. Oh, gin, you just... No, when you're drinking gin, you can already get like that straw, grassy, herbaceous smell from here. It's gonna definitely complement well. Does this help? Yes, I gotcha. And then we're gonna do one ounce of the star Campari. One thing about uh, these drinks, they're all red. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing like a clarified Negroni, um, they'll use like a Suze, uh, which is another uh, bitter liqueur that's yellow. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's red. So we're going to do one ounce of this Campari as well. You see how it just dominated <laughs> the color in the mixing glass? No other color is spared. So that's all right. Then we're going to do um, two dashes of the orange bitters. The little petite guy. And, you know, we're using this. But if you have regular Angostura's or Peychaud's bitters at home, 
just use those. Mm -hmm. It'll still give you the same vibes. How many dashes? Two. Mm -hmm. And then one we'll, more because it's two drinks. Yeah. One long one. And then we're gonna do two dashes of the pay shots. Did they give out the pay shots? This is pimento. Mm. Is there another one in here? To the box. Let's check our box. <laughs> Let's see the pay shots. And the patience is red too. Well, we don't have it, so we're gonna make it. Is this patient? This is oh, it was hidden amongst all uh, of the um, other, like the box stuffing. <laughs> we do have Dale DeGroff's um, pimento bitters too, so shout out to Dale. Here we go. Here are the patience. Okay. And you can see it's still red. It's super red. I wish we had some Angostura to show you the difference because Angostura is not this red. Angostura is dark, it's like a brown. So how many dashes of this? Two. Two. We're just gonna call these ones two long ones. All right. And so now all we need to do is stir. We're gonna add some ice. Yes. And you add the ice in last, that way it's not diluting the drink the whole time while you're adding your ingredients to it. Stir. Stir. Look at the flick of the wrist. Look at the flick of the <laughs> wrist. Look at the flick of the wrist. <laughs> Some people will tell you to count to 30. You don't have to. We're just making sure that thing's iced up, honey. When you see it start to frost a little bit, then that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And a little short. we're going to put some ice in our glass to keep it, you know. I love the bitters and hibiscus. All right. It's, Yum. it's actually more pink than I thought it was. It probably you probably can't tell from the camera, but it's pinky. Yeah, that probably comes from the orange syrup. Meow. Here we go. Awesome! Look at that. We gotta top it though with some sparkling water, but this is how it looks before we top. And I didn't see like a garnish in there, like a dehydrated lemon wheel or orange peel would have been great. Yeah. Cause sometimes this soda water it will explode, explode. <laughs> and we don't want that on camera. Not live. So you just want to add a couple of bubbles, you know, it's going to add some lift to the cocktail. Effervescence. That's right. The bubbles is just going to, you know, even everything out. Mm. And you smell a little bit of the juniper from the gin. You definitely get the Campari and you even get a little note of the orange, um, the orange. Grapefruit. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Happy Friday. Yum, zers. I like that. All right, that's a way to make the Campari like, to tone it down a little bit. It is a tone down. It is. It, you can still get that bitter flavor because there's no hiding that in that Campari. Mm -mm. It's the end, though. It's, it doesn't start. It doesn't start, start off, off like that, that way. It mm -hmm. does. It's on. It's a long finish, but on the tip end of that long finish, you get that bitterness, and I think it's good. The bubbles help. The orange accord is delicious inside this. That's really good. It's an orange cordial, yeah. I want to taste this by itself. Yeah, let's do that. Because it really is doing wonders in this cocktail. It's a cocktail. spiced orange grapefruit cordial. Okay, so some like cinnamon and stuff yep, is inside it's, there. It's definitely cinnamony. <laughs> cinnamony. <laughs> and let me get yours. Let me clean your glass out, too. Oh, yes. And this is what I say, people, with beverages, you can just be so creative. I love grapefruit anyway. Mm -hmm. And orange is a great way to kind of like uh, scale back the bitterness of the grapefruit, especially if you're putting it in a, a bitter beverage. And then the actual cinnamon. I'm just excited to taste it. They probably use vodka um, as the base. Ooh. That's awesome. That's so good. Now that tastes like marmalade for real. Like orange marmalade. And it's not really crazy sweet. It's not like I'm getting like rind, like grapefruit rind and the peel in there too. Cinnamon for sure. It's bright. I mean, really, this in the soda water would have been good. <laughs> yes, it would. Claude. Or this in champagne. Yes. Oh my God. That is, and this is why you should always experiment. Like whenever you look into the market and you don't see something that this. you like. Creative. 
I have not seen a grapefruit liqueur. I mean, there's like pomplamousse and stuff like that. But that pomplamousse that we usually get is pink and it's very bitter and tart. And it's flat. This is textured. Balance. Yeah, man. So you're getting tartness in the very beginning, like the orange notes, but you also, it just ends, it rounds off. That grapefruit is not even crazy. I love this. Great job. Y'all need to sell Who this. Who made this one? Shaker and Spoon. Y'all need to. You need to sell this product. Yes, just the, the cordial or whoever created the cocktail. Greg Mayer. Greg, Greg. Mayer. Bussin. Charleston term. Off the chain. This it's, is so good. That's really good. All right, that's something to make me want to experiment at home. That tastes like one of the Vicario liqueurs. The way that thing is set up, it's good. It's good. This is a 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. That's good. Thank you so much, Campari, for sending this us... This is 8 out of 10. These, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. We're definitely going to be um, making the other cocktails during our time off. We're taking the next week off, you guys. Much needed rest to recalibrate and restore our lives and see our family and friends. And just, just gather. Take a rest. Just gather. So during that time, we're going to be making the other two cocktails. Check back on social media for us to post our creations and what we're sipping on, what we're enjoying during that time. Um, yeah, we're going to be resting. So that means no Facebook Live audio room last week. Next week, we didn't have one this week either due to scheduling conflicts and the storms yeah. and folks being displaced. So thanks for bearing with us as we figure out our schedule and get things worked out with Facebook. But we have some amazing shows lined up. We cannot wait to have these discussions with our guests and share them with you all. And let us know what you guys want to talk about. Like we can come on live and have certain things for you guys if you're interested in certain spirits or techniques. Let us know. We would love to be super interactive with, with, you, with you all. Yes, so mm -hmm. Negroni Week starts on the 15th. That's next Wednesday. So make sure you have a cocktail. Try Negroni. Go to your local bar. If you're in Charleston, next week is Restaurant Week in Charleston. So go out to a bar. You can get a curated menu that's, you know, more affordable than it usually would be. And it usually comes with, like, a cocktail that goes along with it as well. So go to your restaurant that you've been eyeing for the last couple of months. Order Negroni. Have a, a new experience. Yes, because when you order Negronis, these are going to um, nonprofits of the restaurant's choice. So you're actually taking those proceeds and you're helping a nonprofit. Some of them help with hospitality. You know that they've really been struggling. We've all really been struggling throughout the pandemic. And a lot of them help just children and just different the different um, nonprofits that they're supporting. You can also go online at Campari um, and see what different restaurants and what different um, organizations are being funded through Negroni Week. You are right. Yes, definitely go to Campari.com and see which in your area is supporting the, the, the campaign and mm -hmm. go support them. And also you can make it at home. Your liquor stores are definitely going to have gin, vermouth, and Campari at, at every liquor store Everyone. in the country. Everyone. It's the classic. So yes, please check back in. We are going to be back on Facebook Live Audio Rooms on the 23rd. Yes. <laughs> oh, I know. It just seems like it's so far away. Not for me. That's my last day. My cleanse, so. So the 23rd, and who are we going to have on the show on the 23rd? We are going to have Alexis Brown I'm on Instagram. Her name is Lex Luga. Check her out. She is the Chicago or well, Illinois Hennessy rep. So please check our girl out. She's been doing some great things. She also has a company called Causing a Stir, where she uh, does mixology classes and, you know, promotes other bartenders in the Chicago area. So yes, please check out our boo, Alexis. She's going to be talking about all things ambassador. Yes. Um, on how to become an ambassador, you know, what you have to do to be an ambassador, the like task, mm -hmm. and just um, her responsibilities. So we're excited about just talking about her journey um, in the spirits world, period, and then just her new position um, at Hennessy. So... Y'all tune in for that on the 23rd at 7. At 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yes. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, Kanye too, because we know people of color love Hennessy. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little love bit about yak. yak <laughs> and the different levels of Kanye too. So you're not going to want to miss that discussion on the 23rd of September on Facebook. So make sure you're following us on Facebook and make sure that you have the most current version of Facebook app on your phone. There you go. And current, I mean, like, as in 
today mm -hmm. because they are making updates to the platform daily every day and, and there are glitches there so are glitches. we want you guys to be on when we get on and uh you know follow this journey with us and bear with us with the glitches we're working with Facebook. You know, this is a, a pilot program. So beta. we're in beta. beta. We're giving the feedback <laughs> back to Facebook on how it can be bigger and better. And we just appreciate you guys for going along this journey with us. Yeah. Right. Any questions, comments, concerns, please follow us on all platforms at Cocktail Bandits. Yeah. Send us a message if you want to collaborate or if you're interested in just anything that we have going on. We respond and we are more than happy to have new friends. Yes, you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Have an amazing weekend. Happy Friday. Ew. <laughs>